Hello. Welcome to the Hand Playing Challenge. I'm Mark, your host and unpaid critic of hand, antique hand planes, especially those that were poorly designed or, and or manufactured. If you're new to the Hand Playing Challenge video series, I have an introduction video that explains the uh, concept. That was, it was, I should say, the very first video that I made, so be kind. Today's hand plane challenge video is about the Siegley number five jack plane. Uh, there are two things that I want to say about this. One is the Siegley was about the fourth bench plane that I ever bought. And back then, I didn't understand very much about how to, to tune up and use hand planes. And so, I didn't get along well with the Siegley, and I stuck it on the shelf, and it's pretty much sat there for the next 10 or 15 years. Why do I bring this up? Well, it would be it would have been a natural comparison to the Buckeye Sawvice number five. They have a lot of features in common, and we're going to sort of compare and contrast them today. The second reason I wanted to make this video is that the Siegley bench plane that we're going to look at today is a fixed frog design plane. And as you may know from my recent videos, I've been on a tear about how I think fixed frog planes with adjustable mouths are pretty much the cat's meow. However, this plane has some features that challenge some of my previous conclusions about the fixed frog design. And so we're going to go into that in more detail in just a little bit. Let's do a brief history of the Siegley bench planes. Jacob Siegley started making combination planes in 1879. He didn't apparently start making bench planes until 1893. Roughly 12 years later, and in 1905, Siegley stole out, sold out to Stanley. But here, the story gets a little convoluted. Stanley continued making the Siegley style bench planes because they had, after all, purchased the factories and the factories were already set up to make Siegley bench planes. However, concurrently, uh, Siegley must have had some agreement with Edwin Hahn to also manufacture ben bench planes based on the same design and Apparently, there was nothing in the Siegley-Stanley contract that prohibited this from occurring. So, Stanley continued making uh, Siegley-style bench planes, like the one we're going to look at today, for some time. But then, they also made, under the Siegley brand, Stanley made Siegley planes with a Bailey style frog. And these planes are labeled, typically have a cutter labeled SSS for Stanley Steel Siegley, STS for Stanley Thick Siegley, and SBS for Stanley Block Siegley. So, Stanley was making, made two types of Siegley planes, one with the fixed frog design and one with the Bailey style frog. They discontinued the Siegley line in 1927. I'm not exactly sure if they made both types all the way up to 1927 or if they discontinued the fixed frog ones earlier than that. Uh, perhaps someone out there can clarify that for me. So, 
if all of that sounded a little bit confusing, rest assured, I'm a little confused too. So, one thing that I would like to say about the Siegley style fixed frog bench plane, I always like to comment a little bit about the economics and as near as I can make out, uh, one, these were relatively popular planes and partially I think the reason for their popularity is they perform very well as we'll see in a minute and because of the simplicity of the design they were relatively cheap to manufacture and the sales price as near as I can make out I couldn't find an exact match but the sales price of a Siegley bench plane was probably about 60 percent that of a equivalent Stanley bench plane Bailey type bench plane so best of all worlds cheap and works well okay then let's uh, take them apart and see what makes them tick okay so let's uh, take a closer look at the Siegley number five um, this is a Siegley number five but after the Stanley buyout uh, it, it says Siegley stamped into uh, cast into the bed Siegley number five but despite saying Siegley it's definitely made by Stanley it's a Stanley product as evidenced by the stippled pattern in the lever cap the previous the earlier Siegley ones were plain here and typically had a number designating the size of the plane in the lever cap but other than that there's not any other real obvious way to tell that this is a Stanley made Siegley except for the stippled lever cap um, we've already we've commented on the Siegley cast into the bed the Siegley patent number is in is is cast into the lever cap adjusting screw here um, another in, interesting feature or unique feature perhaps is that the side of the tote has sort of a stippled pattern stamped into it pretty much stamped not really carved or or otherwise etched or anything just sort of, you could just sort of stamped I don't know if that shows up on the camera very well, but uh, let's try to, probably not, but you, it's there. We're going to go ahead and take it apart. This should be quick, as you'll see. Lever cap off. Cutter out. The cutter has the series of slots that made up with the uh, tab here which is controlled by kind of a Bailey look style yoke apparently the patent must have already expired when Siegley was using this feature and the cutter has a slot here offset to the side where this pin engages in that slot to do lateral adjustment Apparently, the Stanley style uh, lateral adjuster, where it engages in the, in the slot in the cutter, the patent was still in effect for that one, and so they had to come up with this different one to, to not infringe on that patent. But having said that, we are now done. There is nothing else to take part on this unless you're willing to start driving out pins. Here we see the frog. The frog is held in there with these pins. Obviously those are not going to be very easy to take out. There's a little, uh, a little symbol right here. I can't really make out whether that's a B or an A, but it's, it's there. I think it's a B. Um, what I found very interesting about this frog design is it has 
only three points of contact with the cutter. You've got a nice machined surface down here. And then you just have these two little nubs up here on the top of the frog. Those are literally the only points of contact with the cutter. And as I said before, that's one of the things that intrigued me about this plane is I've had sort of come to the conclusion that for a you know that the fixed frog design is superior and that it relied on having a and the best ones had very continuous uh, frog surfaces here robust solid frog surfaces whereas this one is as diminutive as you can get we're going to uh, compare that to some others in just a moment but that's it that's all there is to describe on the Siegley number no. five uh, jack plane okay let's do a quick comparison between the Siegley number no. five jack plane and the Buckeye saw vice now both of these have the uh, integral, the lever cap also serves as a chip breaker. Both of these have little screws on top of the lever cap here and here where the screws bear against the crossbar here and move the lever cap up and down so as to adjust the distance between the end of the lever cap slash chip breaker and the end of the cutter. Obviously in most cases well, the, 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 certainly you want to have the chip breaker pretty close to the end of the cutter so that it can function effectively. Likewise the Buckeye saw vise has the same arrangement screws here which also adjusts the lever cap up and down. We went into this in great detail in the video on the Buckeye plane. But let's take a look at an interesting difference here. One company actually used their planes and the other one didn't, I would say. So take a look. One of my complaints about the using it having the lever cap also serve as a chip breaker is that it can be difficult to 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 uh, to see the end of the cutter and adjust so that you can adjust the the uh, chip breaker slash lever cap in the correct place but look at the difference here with this with the Siegley you can look right down you can easily see the end of the cutter on that one. They even have a slight rounded nature of this reinforcing strut here so that it doesn't get in the way of that operation. In contrast, the Buckeye saw vise plane has this reinforcing strut go all the way to the top of the, of the sides of the plane Virt, you know, completely obscuring the end of the cutter there. Which, like I say, it makes you wonder if the guy that was designing the Buckeye actually ever used it before he started manufacturing. You know, maybe he should have used his prototype a little bit longer to uh, figure out that people weren't going to be happy with that. It makes it very difficult to adjust your plane. So, so I like this this uh, ease of setting the chip breaker here, I hate it over here. Okay, I've said before, I like a fixed frog. I think that's possibly superior to a Bailey style movable frog. What I've done here is line up all my fixed frog planes, most of which we've had covered in previous videos so that we can sort of take a look at the differences in the various frogs. First up is a infill smoother. Has a machined metal surface down at the bottom. A little hard to see things because the lever cap is hard to get off. 
but it's machined metal surface down at the bottom and a long solid wood surface for the cutter to rest on. Infill smoother. Next up Marples X4. We've covered this in a previous video. Similar to the infill smoother. Nice large area of machine surface down here at the bottom. Again a solid wood continuous surface here for the cutter to rest on. We're sort of proceeding from most to least here. So next up is the Union X4. We've still got the solid machine surface down here at the bottom. But now instead of having a continuous surface for the cutter to rest on, we've just got these two ribs. A little bit less of a, of a um, in the rib category. Here's a Stanley 104 Liberty Bell style plane. Still has the machine surface down here at the bottom but now the ribs have been interrupted by the depth adjustment mechanism so there's a little bit of rib down at the bottom and a little bit of rib up here so less support than in the Union plane. Buckeye saw vise. All we've got here is a sort of a small machine surface down here at the bottom. Only about, uh, you know, three sixteenths of an inch wide. And then the upper part of the cutter rests against this, this rib that goes across the plane here. That's it for the Buckeye saw of ice. And then lastly, the subject of today's video, the Siegley number five. Here we were back to having a nice large machine surface down at the bottom. But there's nothing in here. If we were to put this together and look down the side, you'd see nothing but air between the cutter and the and the frog. So it's only, as, as we said before, it's only supported by this machine surface and these two little nubs up here at the top. Probably even hard to see in the video. So one, two, three. Yet, it actually, we'll, we'll see in just a moment, it, this plane works fairly well, which is leading me to question just what kind of a fixed frog works the best. Uh, we'll go into that more in the conclusions. So there you have it. Fixed frog designs in hand planes. Next up we'll see if it'll take a shaving. Okay, let's take some shavings with the Siegley number no. 5 jack plane. Let's make it so you can see. Very nice. No chatter. Nice thin shaving. Do it again just for off to the side. All righty, could be a little wider, but. I so let's take a, that's a nice, uh, nice thin shaving. Let's make it just a little bit more deep, ever so slightly.
Very good. So, one of the things I don't like about the integral frog design is when you change the depth of the cutter, the blade of course moves down, but the lever cap I slash cap cap iron stays fixed. So in theory, if you're really married to a particular setback, every time you adjust just the depth, you have to also adjust the uh, lever cap. So if we were to do that here, we can loosen the knot, lever cap just a little bit, turn that, turn that, and now we're back at a closer setback. Because we can see in there easily, this becomes a much less painful operation. One more time, then we're going to call it quits, I think. Oop, might have gotten too close to the edge there, because that definitely was not right. And that's what you get into. Let's put it back. Okay, up, up, tighten, that's all there is to it. That got us back in the, in the game. Very, very nice. Full length of the board and pretty wide and reasonably thin. Okay then, it'll take a shaving. Okay, what have we learned about the Siegley number five jack plane? It's uh, what I call a sleeper, a surprisingly good uh, performing plane. Uh, it may not be for everybody. It's lighter weight than a Stanley number no. five, for example. So if you like a heavy plane, you won't like it as much. But I can see why these were popular back in the uh, late 1800s, early 1900s. They were inexpensive and obviously performed very well. Um, so. With respect to the fixed frog design, uh, it's clear based on this test that having a solid continuous surface for the cutter to set on seems not to be a requirement. It seems more important that you have a substantial machined surface down here close to the sole and that you have a lever cap right there on that machine surface to hold the cutter tightly. Apparently that is more of a critical success factor than having a continuous surface on the frog. I look forward to comments about, the, uh, about this particular observation. I'm not going to compare this to uh, the Buckeye Sawvice plane, we already did that in the previous video and it did not fare well so you can tell already that I like the Siegley much better than the Buckeye Sawvice. Okay then, uh, that'll wrap it up for this video. If you like this video series please consider subscribing. Please comment if you have uh, something to say about the content of the video. Uh, they're always much appreciated. I take them all to heart and I try to reply to everybody who comments. And so, 
without further ado, we'll wrap it up and see you next time on the Hand Playing Challenge.